If this video receives 25 likes in the first two days of a BN up, I will release episode 4 of the step by step non ELS series on Wednesday. Did you know that you're most likely not subscribed to the channel? That is the case for over 90% of my viewers. If you hit the subscribe button right now and turn the notification bell on, you will be notified as soon as I put a video out. We are getting so so close to 3,000 subscribers, guys, and I really really appreciate everyone's support. What's going on guys, McGinley Customs here, and welcome back to another video, and can you believe it, I have actually uploaded twice within 7 days, I, I can't believe it, that is actually, that is shocking, that is, <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I've had a couple inquiries recently about the rear flashlights, reverse lights, the flashing reverse lights basically, uh, this was the thumbnail in the video that I am talking about, there was a lot of issues with that video that, you know, I want to go over, and I just want to redo. I've also had a lot of people come to me asking me to redo the video. So yeah, this is the 2021 update on how to make reverse lights flash. So this isn't going to be like a beginner's tutorial. I'm not going to run over like literally everything like the sirens and stuff. I will obviously like I do it in every episode so I can, you know, get it into people's head. Uh, I am going to show myself doing it, but I'm not going to explain myself in too much depth. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be getting the charger that we went over last episode on episode 3 of uh, the non-ALS series. We're going to grab that charger and we're going to make the indicators flash red and blue. Now, I know I said reverse lights, but it is the exact same process with the indicators as the reverse lights. So, you know, if you wanted to do a reverse lights, I'll tell you how to do it at the same time, but it's the same Thing. you just do it to a different part of the car it's the same process so i'm going to go ahead and get a z model opened up get my charger opened up and we'll go from there okay guys so now we are loaded up into z mod we have the charger here you know other people's z modelers might look different to this but this is what my one looks like so essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to get these indicators here we're going to make them flash red and blue as well as that we're also going to ensure that the environmental lighting is working correctly so you know when the blue light's on and it's facing backwards obviously it flashes blue in the environment i.e up a wall or something like that so the first thing we want to do is we want to pretty much detach the part that we're going to make flash from the vehicle now the indicator is pretty straightforward because it's already detached because it's actually its own element within the vehicle so what we're going to do is we're going to open up the police 2 here in the hierarchy open up the chassis and we are going to look for the indicator uh it is here so indicator left rear and right rear so if we do hide all down here and click this like that you'll see that the indicators are here now we don't want to edit or alter the original you know the actual indicator so what we're going to do is we're going to come up here to select what are select the indicators go to create go to copy click anywhere in the window and once you've clicked anywhere in the window, scroll down your hierarchy and double check that there are copies here. If you've done it correct, there should be two copy or one copy of each indicator below the chassis collision here. What you want to do from here is you just want to select these two, uh, these two elements in the hierarchy. Right click and click unlink. From there, we can deselect everything in the window by going back to quad R, hold control and just drag, and over, drag over the indicators like that. If you've done it correctly, you should see that everything is black within the window, like so. From here, simply just close the police two in the hierarchy so your hierarchy is much cleaner. Now, if you're at the right point as I am, you should have your indicator here, your copies, just outside of the police two, like so. Now, what we're going to have to do now is we're going to have to dismiss the compound or dismiss the LOD so we can get the highest quality indicator possible to edit. So the way we do this, we can do them both at the same time in a couple clicks. So you just want to select them both by holding uh, left control and clicking each one of them. You'll know they're selected when they both are yellow like this. From there, just click dismiss up here. And if you've done it correctly, they should no longer be bold. Open up each of these and take out the top one by control clicking them. Right click and unlink them. From here, you can just delete the dummies of the copies we just made. So if you've done it correctly, you should simply just have indicator LR and indicator RR and there should just be them itself. They shouldn't be bolded or anything and you should still be able to see them in the user view. Now, this car is completely fresh. There are no other lights in it at all. 
So that means that we're going to have to get a light texture for the red and the blue lights because there's no other light source on this car to copy from. Now you can use any one you want to be honest. I mean, this isn't actually a default thing from Dodge or this isn't actually a product made. So I don't think there is actually any type of references you can really go from. So I'm just going to use a simple texture of a red and blue light from another light that I have used before. And you'll know it from last episode, it is going to be the wheel and dominator. Now, we're not going to merge the dominator, we're not going to import the dominator because we don't actually need it. So instead of that, we're going to come up here to the material browser. We're going to make a new material by clicking here. And drag all the way to the bottom until you see the new material. From here, you just want to name it whatever you want, to be honest. I'm going to name it Reverse Emis. Emis for emissive. You don't have to name that, you can name it whatever you want. From here, go up to this Pac-Man logo in the top right. Hover over GTAV, go down to vehicle generic, and click on vehicle underscore lights emissive. There we go. If you've done it correctly, it should just be one big white ball like that. From here, just double click that. Now you should see this panel is open called material properties. Now you want to go down here to see detail, and where it says layer input texture map, click on the three dots, and it will open up your texture browser. From here, you want to click add and you want to find the texture of the wheel and dominator i will leave the dominator in the description so you can download it or you should probably have it from last episode now i've got the textures up here but like i said this is only if you don't have any other light source i mean you can copy this if you want even if you do have another light source but if you know what uv mapping is just uv map it onto another light source if you don't know what UV mapping is, I have a video up on my Patreon, or it's actually penned in upload actually, of how what UV mapping is and it's explained in depth. If you want any other tutorials like that, go check out my Patreon. So we're going to double click Domlin 6 because that looks like it's probably the better option. And we're going to click OK. And if you've done it correctly, it should say Domlin 6 or whatever texture you've imported here. Great. So now you've done that, you can exit out of all of that. Now what we want to do is we want to apply the material to the mesh. Now this is very simple. All you have to do is go to Quad R, drag over the mesh, go to Properties, go down to Polygons, click on Material, and drag all the way down until you see the material you made earlier. Remember we made that reverse emis? We're going to click on that and click Apply. If you've done it correctly, you should see that your indicators have changed colors. Now, from here, we're going to have to UV map them to correctly color them. Now, what we do is we just simply select the indicators, click right click, hover over mapping, click edit UV. Now, this is called UV mapping. It's very, very complicated for someone who's new at this, but all you have to know, UV mapping is just simply how you change the texture around or how you move the mesh around the te texture. Now, it depends on how or what car you've detached or taken the light source off of. Uh, this, these are for indicators, so obviously each of them will be in the same place in the texture. Now, it is a little bit confusing again, but what we're going to do is we're just going to click Keep Old Mapping. And then once you've done that, we're going to go to Force Onto Material Mapping. So basically, what that does, it sets the background of the UV map. You'll see exactly what I mean in a second. And from here, click on default material and find the material that we made. Again, reverse emis here. Click OK. And once you've done that, select one of your four windows. It can be any one of them. I'm just going to use the top left. Click it. Click on UV mapper. Go down to material. And you should see your material name here that we just made. If you click on it, you'll see it opens up your texture. And hopefully you should be able to see your indicator or your reverse light, whatever you're doing. Now, this is, we're going to move this around. It's exactly the same as moving around something if you was moving it on a car or moving it around at all. So all we do is we simply just select the whole light, click on modify and click on move. Now you'll see as I move this around, you'll see that it's changing colors on the respective bit I've dragged it on. If you can see that in the bottom right. Now, what we're going to do is we need to actually select only one of them at the moment because we need to do red and blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide one of them like that, drag it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to objects here 
and I'm going to hide one of the indicators like so. I'm going to move one of the indicators down in the map and then reshow the indicators that we just hid. As you can see, they've been separated and we can actually do separate colors on them now if we do this. There we go. Now, obviously, I want red and blue. I want red on the left and blue on the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to scale it up a little bit so we can get these lines in. So as we can see, the red one, which I'm focusing on right now, we've got the lines in it and it's red. So that's cool. Simply deselect it how you would with anything else. Hold left control and drag over it. And then move up the other one like so. Now I've actually got these the wrong way around, but it doesn't actually matter. Now from here, you can just exit out of the UV mapper by going to the top left. Clicking that and changing it to whatever view it was before. In my instance, it was the front view. Sweet. Now what we want to do is we want to move out the light a little bit so it's not in the way of the indicator or it doesn't clip with the indicator. Now simply all we do to do this is we select the indicators or the reverse lights or whatever you're doing. You zoom into it and you move it a tiny bit like that. Literally the smallest bit so it doesn't leave its housing at all. It doesn't clip through the glass or anything. Sweet. Now what we want to do, we want to reset the vertex IDs. Now that sounds a bit complicated, it sounds a bit confusing, but trust me, it is very, very simple. The reason we're doing this is because what Op what Z Modeler thinks and GTA thinks, they still think this is an indicator because it has a vertex ID to tell it that. All we got to do to change that is come up here to vertex mode. Whilst having the two lights selected, click any area in the window. Once you've done that, select the light. Once you've done that, come up here to properties. Come down here to external state where it says ID, click it here and make sure it says zero like that. And then click apply. If you've done it correctly, all of these vertex lines should just come flying out of the, pair, of the mesh. From here, we can click here, which is object mode to get out of a vertex mode. And that is that. All right, guys, so things look a little bit different since the last car, and that is because this is me later on in the video realizing that I also forgot one more step. See, even the people who've done it the most also forget things. The reason I didn't just retake the scene or anything is because I want to show that even I forget things at times and that it's natural to make mistakes. So yeah, all we need to do, guys, again, like I just said, it looks a little bit different because it's for me later on in the video, but it's still the same process. So just keep the lights selected once you're out of object mode, or once you're in object mode, sorry, out of vertex mode, come up here to polygon mode. Once you've clicked on this mode here, polygon mode, click anywhere in the window, select the lights like this, using quad R, and then you want to go up to properties, click on external state, and double click it. You'll see it looks a bit different here because I've already done it. You'll see that it is actually blank here. Just click on it, make sure you write zero, and click apply. Once you've done that, you can go back into object mode. Anyway, guys, we can cue the video back on now. Once again, I'm sorry about that. See, even I still make mistakes. So, yeah, if you have any problems with it, leave it in the comments below, and I will try my best to get back to you. Now, all we have to do from here is simply just name it a siren and do the delta values and the sequencer. I went over that very, very in detail last episode and the episode before on the non-ELS uh, non series. So I'm going to do a speed run of me doing that real quick, and I will show you that it's working in-game. Okay, so I've now scaled, rotated, and LOD'd my lights. The last step we've got to do before we export is we simply just have to select the lights up here, get to quad R, select them, go to surface, click this one here called calculate normals. Once you've clicked that, click anywhere in the window, and then you're done. Okay, guys, so one more thing before you export it. I know I just said the last thing to the calculate normals, but I forget this every time, and I feel like you guys would also forget it every time. So the last thing you have to do is make sure that you go to the material browser here, drag the vehicle underscore lights emissive we made earlier in the video all the way to the top so it's above the class. Now you can export and you can put in your game. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a notepad, write down the sequence of value that I want to use. For example, I want it to go left, right, left, right. And then from there, I'm going to convert it and I'll come back to you once I've done that. You to speed run.
Okay, so as you can see, I have written out which sirens I've used, what color, and that we rotated it by 180 degrees, and I've already converted the decimal, or sorry, the, the hexadecimal, and I've already converted the binary number into a decimal number. Now from here, we need to access a car carcoals.meta and a car variations.meta, and we have to put it into some type of game source such as 5M or Grand Theft Auto single player. I'm going to be using Grand Theft Auto single player because I like my graphics more than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it in game, put these delta values in. I will come back to you once I've put the values into the car call so I can show you how I've done it, what I did. And then after that, I will see you in game. Okay, guys. So as you can see, Siren 1 and Siren 2, we rotated by 180 degrees. So the delta value is set to 3.1412 whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's on the cheat sheet. And the color value is on blue because Siren 1 was blue. The delta values have also been set as you can see here so yeah okay guys so once you're in game and you have the vehicle spawned if you hit the siren activation key you should see that the lights come on if you've done it awesome job if it's not working at all you can't see the lights whatsoever then you have done a step wrong in the video at some point if it's working and it's a little bit dim then that means that you have not set your polygon ids or your vertex ids correctly if you've done it like this and it's nice and bright congratulations you have done it now this video was a bit of a error one i guess you could say in editing and when recording i had to go back a couple of times so if i've made any editing mistakes or made any mistakes at all please let me know in the comments and i will get it fixed asap anyway guys if you enjoyed the video please leave a like please 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 subscribe we are so so close to 3,000 subscribers now and the fact of the matter is that 90% of you aren't subscribed. If just one of you, and that means you watching right now, subscribe, then we will almost get to 3,000 subscribers. If this video reaches 25 likes within the first two days of it being up, I will release episode 4 of the non ELS series on Wednesday. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching. I'm McGinley Customs, and I will see you in the next video.